Where better to start, I suppose, than down at Selhurst Park for the visit of Manchester United. It's a match between two clubs struggling dangerously at the foot of the First Division. But one eagerly awaited in South London, half million, is the figure to consider. That's how much Palace have spent this season refashioning their side. Now with Alan Whittle, their £100,000 signing from Everton, getting his first game, with John Craven switching to substitute. Half a million. That's the number of spectators who've watched Manchester United this season, in spite of their troubles. Now without Bobby Charlton, who's got the flu, and of course without George Best. Mulligan. Don Rogers. Oh, nicely inside the full back for Mulligan. Here's a chance, and a goal! Scored by Mulligan, but made beautifully by Don Rogers. Mulligan's goal, and his first for Crystal Palace. And he was sneaking in there, but it was the pass by Rogers that made it. And it's uh, Hughes again with the corner for Crystal Palace. Hit low again. Payne. Blythe was right in there. Payne. United holding off the Whittle now. With a shot and a fraction pass and pushed there by Stepney. And Whittle so close to adding number two on his first appearance. And Manchester United simply don't know which day it is. Tony Dunn still getting treatment. Taylor turned in again. Cook there, but Kidd there a fraction before him. Bill Blythe following it through, stabbing one there for Cook. And now Hughes, and now Mel Blythe. Oh, and he missed the sitter. He got in a superb position. It was a beautiful pass for him, and he missed the sitter, Mel Blythe. Charlie Cook. Scorching forward again. Whittle had moved offside, came back onside. Hughes, a lot of space. Still Hughes, still Hughes. Whittle, a save by Stepney. Mulligan. Philip. Payne. And onside, yes, Hughes is onside. He didn't look it, but the linesman said he was. And Hughes has his shot saved on the line by O'Neill. He got back so quickly. And in a way, I think it was justice because he looked offside. Well, at the third attempt, he finds Tommy O'Neill. And now Dennis Law. O'Neill. Crossed again there, nodded on. Dougal. That was a fantastic. No, it's disallowed. Disallowed. Disallowed by John Hunting. McDougal must have been offside. Brian Kidd. Wynn Davis. And good play there by Bobby Bell. Now the chase is on. Rogers going faster than any of them. Still with Rogers. Oh, played inside for Mulligan. And another goal! Paddy Mulligan second! Made for him by Don Rogers, just as the first one was. And Paddy Mulligan, the skipper and the fullback, turns a striker twice to such very good effect. The ball from Rogers and Mulligan, a fairly simple task. Whittle. Rogers, and he's onside, John Rogers. Six at one side now. That's there. That's number three. Tremendous presence of mind by John Rogers. But Rogers, in a way, doing a Pele, turning it one side of uh, Stepney, running the other, and then finding the net to put Crystal Palace 3-0 ahead. This time for Morgan. And with Tom 
Tony Young right in there as well, but Payne's challenge beating him. Whittle coming in, and now Rogers away again. Wally got him going one way, got him going the other, just through one. That would have been a marvellous goal by Don Rogers, because his running was so sure, and he really turned Sadler inside out, and then saw Stepney leaving a gap on that far side and aimed for it. Law, Young right in there, Sadler in there too. And it's Dennis Rogers now. Oh, there's a chance for the break. Rogers going the length of the field. And still going on. And he's got the pace to get beyond uh, Buchan. And the shot. And that was a tremendous run again by Rogers. Here's up. Whittle. Well, that's incredible. Yes! Yeah! can't help thinking the effect of all the problems off the field have shown themselves on the field as well. Blythe coming in for Palace. And this has been their greatest afternoon. And there's Rogers. Will this be five? It's going to be five. And he's five. Yes, Crystal Palace's biggest win in their first division history and indeed the first we've been able to show you on the big match. At last we've broken that hoodoo and I'm sure all Palace fans will be saying, well, it was well worth waiting for. But now for his views on the game, Jimmy Hill. Well, it was a wonderful day yesterday at Selhurst Park, really summed up by the chap alongside me who said that you know where Palace have fooled him. He said they spent half a million pounds on forwards. He says, and it's the fullback who scores the goals. <laughs> but never, never mind about uh, the joke about Paddy Mulligan. What a performance he gave for Crystal Palace yesterday. And indeed, what a skipper he's proved for the side. He really gives that defence solidarity at the back. His coolness really is infectious as he picks the ball up here always in command of the situation, always ready to move forward. Not only you've got a defender who's cool and keeps it together at the back, but you've got an extra right winger in your side when you've got Paddy Mulligan. There he is there, crossing this ball, starting the move, but watch how he's gone on the run down the wing, and that beautiful through ball there from Don Rogers puts him in this position. Stepney covers the cross, Mulligan sees it and slides it the other side in, side of him into the net. But what about Don Rogers? A revelation, his performance yesterday. I don't think I've seen a more exciting performance all season from one player. He, he linked very well with Whittle. You see them there on the right wing, the two of them together, as if they've been playing together all their careers, came together yesterday for the first time and really were a menace throughout the game. Both have pace to spare. They're always threatening defenders with their running ability. See here how Whittle wins this ball when he knows that if he gets it to Rogers, he can put him right through into his opponent's half. And of course, when Rogers is in that position, he doesn't lose ground. He throws Sadler away there and misses the goal by six inches. A lovely skill from a beautiful player. It's to South London on a blustery day for the derby game between Crystal Palace and Chelsea. Palace again in the throes of a desperate relegation struggle. But at least the Palace players uh, should be in the right mood for this one. And for skipper Paddy Mulligan, the number two, is the return to the side after six games out with injury. Now facing his old Chelsea teammates. But the former Chelsea star Charlie Cook is out with injury. Bobby Bell, their strong defenders, down with flu. He gives a first league chance to the 19-year-old Scott Jim Cannon. He'll be wearing the number six. So there's a few moments here for Paddy Mulligan and Eddie McCready to talk over old times. But for McCready, it's also a time to contemplate once again just how badly Chelsea have been hit by injuries. Now it's striker Chris Garland who is unfit. And so it's the chance for manager Dave Sexton to try a couple of his promising youngsters. 17-year-old Brian Basson at number seven and 18-year-old Ian Britton at number 11. 
Played on for Bossy, and a nice one through for Bossy as Rogers goes through. Hit right foot and beautifully saved by Bonetti. What a superb sweeping move by Crystal Palace. Rogers with the finishing touch, but a nice one too that he played with Bossy. And now Malik. Well, Hinton nodding that straight to Philip. And it's still not away yet. Henshelwood with it now. Philip letting another one fly and infection and a goal! Oh, and it's a goal! One nil to Palace. Philip was the man who let it go. That's pleased the crowd. Philip really let it go. There was a deflection that put it wide of Bonetti and high into the corner of the goal. And it's 1 0 to Crystal Palace. Hinton still lurking there, though. A low driven one again. McCready hoped to get to it. And Philip getting it away to Posse. And now for Rogers. Harris is streaming back to try and stop Rogers. And Rogers is on his way. Played now for Whittle and straight at Bonetti. Another beautiful move by Crystal Palace. Exciting to watch and deadly dangerous to face for Chelsea. It's with Rogers again, the delicate little chip this time. And Cannon! Oh, Cannon got it! Well, and he deserves it. Most certainly he deserves it. He's played superbly in his first league game in defence. He had his name taken almost before. The game had started, he's marked Osgood well, and now from that free kick, delicately chipped in by Don Rogers, Cannon is there to make it 2-0. Ten minutes of the second half gone. Hinton's header, but it falls for Rogers. Harris, Posse! Oh, my goodness, what a shot! Bonetti couldn't have known too much about that, and it was really a half chance that came off the boot of Harris. Well, I don't know where the whistle's gone, the players don't seem to know, and the referee decides that the game goes on. And now it's through for Whittle, now is that number three? No! It's with Rogers. Now, is he going to let one fly? Well, it's in the right position for him. Lost his chance there as though he'd poked it just a little too far ahead of him for that shot. Posse trying to get a one two going and it's still with Posse. Hit and a beautiful save by Bonetti. So a corner to Palace and Posse, certainly not an easy chance. A volley that really brought out the very best in this fellow, Peter Bonetti. And, of course, exactly the right start for new manager Malcolm Allison. Here is Malcolm now, and with him is Jimmy Hill. Well, Malcolm, a lot of pressure, even for you. How did you react to it? Well, it was, it's was. it been rather hectic since Friday morning until about 7 o'clock last night. Now you brought me in here again this morning, and I think you're trying <laughs> to kill me. Um, but it, it has been really, really hectic, and uh, I was really exhausted last night. I just got home and just laid down on the bed and fell fast asleep. Like many footballers, you generally use Saturday night to celebrate. Was that well, the quietest one you've had for a few years? It was the quietest Saturday for 20 years, Jim. So no champagne even for that uh, well, victory? Well, had a couple of bottles. <laughs> <laughs> what about the future of Crystal Palace? If, if Chelsea fans have just forgiven me, we're not mentioning you this week because it is rather Crystal Palace's week. But Crystal Palace's future? Well, I think that I was, what I saw yesterday, I was very pleased. The players were happy after the match and uh, they, I think they were rejuvenated after their victory. And I think we'll get down to work this week and uh, we'll sort out any small problems we have and get out of trouble. What about those two points yesterday? The best two points I've ever earned in my life. <laughs> Malcolm Allison, thank you very much indeed. Manchester's loss, unquestionably London's gain.
But now let's have some current action. Crystal Palace against Manchester City and the moment when the crowd started to look towards the tunnel for the sight of a familiar figure. Well, here is Malcolm Allison today. It's ironic, really, that today we shall see him sitting on the bench at Selhurst Park because during his time here as a manager, he was banned from taking up that position and had to sit in the director's box and just look at the welcome that he's getting from the Palace fans here. In fact, earlier today, he was saying to me, it's almost like coming home. Let's check, first of all, then, on the Crystal Palace side and two serious blows for them. Jerry Francis and Mike Flanagan are both missing. Flanagan's got a hamstring. Francis is almost fit, but manager Terry Venables decided not to risk the former England captain. Steve Kemba continues in the midfield, and back to the attack comes Dave Swindlehurst. As for Manchester City, they had two injury blows yesterday, when Colin Viljoen and the pole Kazi Dana were both ruled out. Hanson again. Supported by Reed, the number 10, but there were enough Palace shirts there to mop up that little situation. Swindlehurst, good control, a nice little ball play there for Walsh. And in turn for Murphy, Ian Walsh again. And getting it across. Oh, and Swindlehurst almost got the touch in. Beautiful bit of play again by Crystal Palace. When the ball comes through to Walsh, played across the goal there, and Swindlehurst couldn't quite touch it home. Bennett. Kinsey trying to get on the action as well, but uh, it's Murphy coming away from Crystal Palace, slanting the ball there. Clayton really didn't know where it was. And Steve Daly putting it straight to Hilaire. It'll come back to Hilaire again. A chance for a shot, a little chip, oh, just marginally over. And Hilaire nearly punishing Daly for that mistake of his. Daly planting the ball straight at Hilaire, and Hilaire finding room to get in a shot. And what a lovely little chip it was, just over that city crossbar. Daly, Hilaire wanted to handle that ball, and here's Silkman by Mackenzie's pass. Power going outside him. Silkman looking to get a shot in, and what a good one, and what a good save. Well, there's no shortage of really brilliant football here today. John Barrage coming to complain about something. Got a cut on the head there, maybe. And while that gets a bit of attention, and he must have hit his head on the post as he made that save. My word, what a good save it was, though. Um, and it's Silkman who cuts in there. Let's go with the right foot, curling in, and a really miraculous save by Burridge. Terry Venable's very happy indeed with the way that Palace have been playing, even though they haven't been picking up point, the number of points they picked up at the start of the season. They've won five games now without a win. But that's a goal by Walsh! whether Corrigan will blame himself for that. It was hit firmly by Walsh, that's for sure, but it was... Without question, uh, Joe Corrigan got his hands to it. And it just crept over the line. And now Hilaire. Now, can he find the angle for that cross? That's a good cross there. Oh, and what a good bit of football as Walsh went soaring into that one. And Corrigan saved superbly. But what a cross by Vince for there. The angle looked impossible the way he was running, but he screwed that ball back perfectly. Inch perfect for Walsh to climb, and big Joe Corrigan get his fingertips to it and over it went. Fucho with the free kick. Clayton's gone up on the far side. It only come as far as Silkman. Ransom's right in there, Bennett is in there. And a shot beautifully saved by Burridge from Reed. Nick Reed really gave that a tremendous clock with his right foot. Well, applause from the director's box and from Ian Smith. As Reed really clouted that ball with his right foot. And uh, Burridge did what Corrigan had done just a moment before. And it's Murphy swinging it in there. And headed off the line, Cannon's header. And Swindlehurst 
has put it in. Well, they thought they got over their immediate crisis, City. And there's a shot that shows the joy of scoring. As the header went in from Cannon, it was knocked off the line by Ray Ranson, but he got no length on it, and Swindlehurst was able to turn and whack it into the roof of the net. So what's awaiting Joe Corrigan here? As Murphy flicks the little free kick in there. Well, Corrigan called upon to save superbly from Hinchelwood. And the ball finally in the touch. And Corrigan getting a great round of applause there, a beautifully righted free kick there for Murphy, and Hinchelwood in a lot of space. Good save. So, a victory for Palace, well-deserved, that puts them into fourth place, but what's more important, I think you'll agree, a match where the good things in football came out on top, skill, attack, and still the bite of competition as well. And afterwards, I talked to the two men who, by their philosophy, brought it about. Managers Terry Venables of Crystal Palace, and Malcolm Allison of Manchester City. I felt the crowd was tremendous and uh, I hope they really enjoyed us, which I think was uh, an excellent game. What was your uh, verdict overall, Terry? Well, like you said, it was written up to be a great game of uh, attacking teams, young players, everything that's good in the game. And uh, I was just pleased that uh, it even surpassed that. I thought the football at times from both sides were, was absolutely superb. Mm. What did you feel about the first goal, Malcolm? Uh, I mean, it was a strongly hit shot by Ian Walsh, but, I mean, what did you feel about Joe Corrigan's part in it? Well, Joe was disgusted with himself, but I think that he was so disappointed when the ball went through his hands that he didn't rec recognise that if he'd have turned, he could have just put his hand on the ball and it wouldn't have been in the net. Uh, which is very unusual for Joe, because he's got very, very good reaction. He's a very alert guy and a tremendous trainer, a good professional. And uh, he was just absolutely frustrated and disappointed with himself. Yes, because it was amazing because there was so much good goalkeeping right through that it, that one incident should, yeah. should spoil yeah. it. He was, he was falling and he, he went to catch it. He's got beautiful hands and he just went through them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting worried. <laughs> do, you feel, do you feel, talking about another incident, that, that may be a penalty early on in the game, which looked as though it was a penalty to you, that might have turned the whole thing? I'm not allowed to say anything. <laughs> that, was that was quite funny because we had a little ch interchange there. Of, um, he jumped up because he thought it was a penalty. And, of course, the player reacted as well. And he said to the referee, no penalty. And he got his name taken. So I said... Yeah, you've just, got, and he's, you've just taken his name for him. So he said, I'll find him, Monday. <laughs> <laughs> but your feeling was, it, I mean, you're, you're entitled to an opinion, for heaven's sake. No, we're, we're not entitled to an opinion, but I think he was tripped in the penalty area. <laughs> <laughs> Terry Venables and Malcolm Allison, and what about that for a man laughing in defeat? And people say there's no fun in football these days. It's Crystal Palace down from the first division against their South London neighbours, Charlton Athletic, fresh up from the third. Let's join our cameras then at Selhurst Parks. Here's Hedda. Made in again for Walsh. Lands down. Now Hedda again. Beautiful little bit of skill there. Close control by Hedda. Then he tried just a little too much against Ferns. And a chance for Robinson to break. Pinchel will go and he's beaten them all now. Wicks is covering up, Ferns has gone streaking through the middle, Hales is in there too, and if it comes to Hales, it's got to be a goal! And it's saved superbly by Bowen. Well, I tell you, 99 times out of 100, 
you would have had to put Hales, the scorer, down for that one. He very rarely misses opportunities like that. But that was a golden chance for Hales, and Barron foiled him superbly. days but Palace looked quite good for long spells I must say and I think I'd be a little optimistic about their chances this season. Charlton well as manager Alan Mullery told me I'm not too displeased I saw some good things and after all he said we had the best two chances in the game Derek Hales in the first half and Don McAllister in the second so it seems everybody was happy. <laughs>